Hello and welcome to a new in the mail. Well, you could say I've been on a shopping spree lately with all these uh, mail items that I'm getting. The thing is, I just noticed these uh, electronic modules or products. They seem interesting and I want to evaluate them. But this should be a good thing and also interesting to watch. So I have this uh, pile of mail items that we need to get through. So let's get started. Some of you might recognize the device in here. Its name is um, written here and I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It might be uh, Sonoff or S on off. Anyway, let's say it's a small uh, IoT device. So Internet of Things because it will connect to the Internet over Wi-Fi and will allow you to turn a relay on or off through an app or through an API which um, I'm not sure they, they have uh, released so far. So this thing has um, universal AC input. It has a 10 amp, 2.2 kilowatt uh, power capability through the internal relay. Both iOS and uh, Android apps are available. So you put your um, AC mains voltage on this side and you have a relay controlled output on this side. I have seen this type of enclosure before, I think with uh, LED power supplies. So they must have found this model of enclosure, they buy it in bulk and they're sticking their custom sticker on here, which is of course way less expensive than uh, making your own mold. In fact, let's do a quick teardown before power up and see what we have inside this thing. I already know it uses the ESP8266. But even if I haven't known that information, it would still be safe to assume that all internet connected devices these days use the ESP8266, at least all the cheap ones. So first we're going to remove these uh, protection caps. Doesn't appear to have any screws. So it must be held in by uh, clips. Yep, so just as I assume they, they get this uh, enclosure, they drill a couple of holes for their uh, tactile switch and for the LED and then just they, they just stick a, a custom sticker on the top of the case. Let's take the module out. We can see we have a single PCB construction with a mixed surface mount and a through hole components. So we will take a look at the uh, clearance distance on the hot side in a moment. But let's start from the input side. Considering this thing is self-powered, they must have a small AC to DC power supply in here. And uh, we can see that clearly. And uh, starting from the AC input, we have some input protection. We have uh, a mouth, an inductor, which is that uh, green part in there, that is for filtering. Uh, we also have a, probably a fusible resistor, which is this guy right here, and a filtering capacitor. All of these components are typical to be found in every switch mode power supply input section. And as I mentioned, they are for protection and filtering. We also see our uh, bridge rectifier on this uh, bottom side, as well as the switch mode controller I see, which is this small six pin device. The main AC to DC power supply is probably converting down to five volts DC. And then we probably have a 3.3 volts linear regulator to power the ESP8266. And I believe that 3.3 volts regulator is this one right here, judging by its um, by its close proximity to the ESP8266 and the capacitor placed on its output. And that's about all you need to, to build a, an Internet of Things device like this one. By the way, the schematic for this thing is available. I think they um, advertise it as uh, open source. I'm not sure on that. 
Um, we also noticed the uh, the ESP8266 chip with its uh, PCB antenna on this side and all the required passives. And also on this side we have this uh, Winbond 8-pin device which could be a flash memory used to store all the settings for the ESP8266. We can see the high voltage tracks going from the input all the way up to the uh, output on the right. They uh, seem to have enough clearance between uh, live and neutral. Actually, let's let's try to measure the clearance. I think they have at least one and a half millimeters between these um, tracks. And uh, also they have a cutout to increase the creepage distance. The tracks are doubled with uh, both uh, top and bottom tracks connected with vias all the way. And on the bottom they have removed the solder max and on the bottom they have removed the solder masks and they have uh, thinned the tracks also to increase the current carrying capability but even so uh, just by looking at how uh, thin these uh, tracks are I'm not sure they could handle 10 amps at uh, 230 volts for anything longer than a couple of minutes I think these tracks will uh, heat up and uh, rise in temperature if you put 2 kilowatts through them. Also it appears they are only switching the uh, live through the relay and the neutral is connected straight through. That is a possible safety concern and I believe in order to get the required certifications like a CE to import and sell this thing legally in Europe you need to be switching both live and neutral through the relay. Both of these problems can be solved by using a better quality relay uh, with a higher rating with dual pole contacts in order to switch both neutral and live wires and also a bit more optimizing on the high voltage tracks making them a bit uh, wider should be possible even with this um, current arrangement. Also one thing that always comes to mind with these designs is the uh, type of relay used it's a normal relay, non-latching, which means it will have to stay energized to keep the contact in the required position. And I'm not sure what kind of life expectancy you can get out of these uh, no-name relays. But I will stop here, as this is not a, a review for this uh, device. And a link is in the description below if you'd like to get one. This thing was on sale for a limited time, and I was able to purchase it for $10 but it might sell for a higher price when you're viewing this video. It was delivered with this plug adapter because it appears to have, let me show you, Australian type plug. Uh, maybe it was uh, designed specifically for the Australian market or maybe, maybe they have a surplus of this particular plug type and they are selling these for a discount. I'm not sure. So this is all you get inside the box. This is how it looks like. Uh, it also has this uh, on off button and uh, probably some LEDs behind these, uh, this panel, but not much else. As you saw, it comes with this uh, rather nice packaging. And uh, when comparing to our previous device, this one does have a C marking on the device itself. I'm not sure if this is uh, really a CE certified device or if they just stuck the CE logo in there. But we'll take a look inside and see how the design presents itself. It is probably meant to be sold in stores. So uh, that's why it has the uh, nice retail box. By looking at the specs, it is basically the uh, same as the S on off device I showed earlier. 10 amps and uh, 2.2 kilowatts universal AC input with both Android and iOS um, supported. The plastic uh, seems nice and we see it was uh, designed as a uh, socket controller meaning it will go between a wall socket and your, your device on this side uh, and will control the, uh, flow the flow of electricity to your device. A nice feature is that you get this on off button on the side so you can manually override this thing locally. 
what I really want to do is take this thing apart and see its internal construction. I am curious to see if they use the same ESP8266 chip of, or if they using something else because there are plenty of other chips that could do the same jobs and for a similar price. I must say I have been playing with this SP Mini today and I have noticed that the software is nicer than the one from the S on off. I, it was easier to get it up and running and it seems uh, much more intuitive and responsive. But this isn't a review so I won't be talking about that now. Let's try to open this thing. I don't see any screws although there might be one in here under this, uh, this label. Let's try to remove the label. Oh no, there, this is just the, this is what you get when you injection mold something. There is this, um, this point where all the, the material was injected into the mold and you get this, uh, this small indent in the material. I was wrong, this, this is not a screw hole. So I think we're going to have to remove this uh, acrylic faceplate. Yeah, I can feel some glue in there. Yeah, it's definitely glued. I think I'm going to try to heat this thing up with um, with some hot air and maybe soften that glue. Yeah, it's a bit easier after softening the glue. Just as expected, we have a couple of Phillips screws under this faceplate. Let's take those off. It looks like they also have some retaining clips. I hope I didn't uh, damage anything in there with my screwdriver. Now, okay, this piece also comes off. And we can see inside our device. Right away I notice this um, two board construction and we have the uh, onboard uh, power supply as well as the relay on uh, the, our first board and we have a secondary board in here which is probably where all our um, logic and uh, wireless um, interface resides. Looks like the earth pin comes off this side but I'm trying to push on the other two and it, this board just doesn't move at all. I don't see any screws holding it down so I'm afraid it's it's um, stuck with the uh, same double-sided sticky tape as was the uh, front panel. So I'm going to pause this video and try to get that, uh, that board out of there. So I managed to, to make it uh, uh, move just by by pressing on these two sockets. I was able to uh, Make it move now. I think we can get it off Yeah, and we have full access. That's strange. We have some uh, black residue in here You think uh, You only get black residue when there is uh, something wrong like a short circuit but the PCB doesn't appear to have anything wrong on this side, which was that touching the plastic. So that was probably something, uh, uh, some debris left from the uh, production process for this enclosure. We basically see almost exactly the, the, the same construction, except that this one uh, looks to be uh, better built and it looks like it could handle the uh, rated power. So starting from this side, which is the AC input, we see uh, the same protection elements. We have a fuse, we have an, a mauve, we have um, a filtering inductor and capacitor. We have our uh, switch mode power supply controller IC, and this is probably our uh, inductor, which uh, generates the five volts DC. As mentioned earlier, this is a two board construction. And we have the uh, wireless module on uh, this separate board 
which might not even be manufactured by Broadlink uh, itself, which makes the whole product. They might get this uh, module ready assembled from a different manufacturer, maybe from Mediatek itself, because uh, this module doesn't use the ESPA266, it uses the MT7681 manufactured by uh, Mediatek or Rawlink, I don't know, they, um, it seems to be the same manufacturer. But um, it is very similar to the ESPA266, the same kind of um, uh, IOs and the same kind of functions as a um, wireless uh, system on chip. We also have a flash memory to store its settings, but just by looking at the um, module, it does seem to uh, require more external components when uh, compared to the ESPA266. So they have this, this module that goes into this uh, main board and uh, controls the relay. When looking at the uh, relay, we do notice something interesting. We have two ratings. We have 12 amps at 125 volts AC and 15 amps at 125 volts AC. So I'm not sure if this is a print error. Maybe it should have been uh, 12 amps at 230 volts AC because this thing is rated for 230 volts AC and if they just lied and uh, rated it for 230 volts AC well the relay doesn't support that that is a potential problem because the contacts inside the relay might um, get premature damage because of working with a higher voltage but um, you do get uh, quite a bit of uh, margin on the um, current because the device is only rated for 12, for 10 amps, but we see we get uh, at least 12 amps out of this relay. And physically, it is larger than the one used in the S on off device. So I suppose that's, that's a good thing. We also get the same ar architecture uh, with regarding to switching only the, uh, only the live wire. The uh, neutral is connected uh, straight through. So I'm not sure how they're getting that um, C marking in here. They're probably lying about it. They don't have a C certification. Once again, that is a, a possible um, problem, a possible safety issue, because uh, they should be switching both the live and uh, neutral. Uh, one interesting thing is about these LEDs. They do have these um, mounts, which we are supposed to feed through both leads of the LED, but as you can see, they're only using one of those uh, mounting holes. Other than that, they're, they're very, very similar, except I would trust this one to be able to handle the uh, 2 kilowatts rating, because as we can see, we have much beefier tracks, um, same type of construction, both top and bottom tracks, connected with uh, vias and uh, tinted on the bottom side. Also, we it seems we, we get a uh, much better clearing between uh, clearance distance between live and neutral. In fact, let's measure it. We're getting about three millimeters of uh, clearance between live and neutral and uh, about one millimeter right here between, um, well, live and live but uh, it, this is the um, uh, live coming out of the relay. So very similar construction, but I, I just think this one would, uh, would survive better with long-term usage, uh, even close to its uh, rated full power. And the main difference is that this one uses the Mediatek uh, wireless chip, while the other one uses the ESP8266. Do let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see a uh, review comparison video between the S on off and the SP mini. That way I can evaluate both uh, hardware and software and tell you which one does best in um, every aspect.